I don't know why every time I work out, my back hurts so bad. I don't know, me too. It's frustrating. It Stick around and find out. I've had many patients come to my office for low back pain after they've started a workout routine. Most of the time it's from high intensity group type workouts. There are usually two types of exercises that cause low back pain. The first type usually involves overwork of the muscles of the low back or bad form causing stress to the discs and the tissues surrounding the disc. These are usually easily identified and an alternative exercise can be suggested. The other type usually involves exercises people do thinking they are helping their low back by working the core when they're actually doing exercises that are causing their low back pain. People get frustrated because they're trying to make positive changes in their life only to have pain keep them from being healthy and active. So let's break down these two types of exercises and what we can do to prevent injury and pain and still get a great workout. First, let's deal with the first type or the direct injury causing exercise. These are the easiest to identify because they usually happen during the exercise or you feel it as soon as the next day. These include squats, deadlifts, and swinging a kettlebell between the legs. While these are the easiest to identify, they're also the ones that can cause the most severe conditions, like low back strain sprain, muscle spasms, disc tears, disc bulges, which can lead to pain down the legs or sciatica. So what can we do to work out in a safe manner but also get a great leg workout? Not only do I have a great alternative, but it's better for working all of the leg, including all the surrounding and balanced muscles. So what are these alternative exercises to the squats and deadlifts, and what do you need to perform them? Well, the good news is, all you need is a floor. The exercise is simply a squat performed on one leg while balancing. First, stand on one leg with the other leg held up in front at 90 and 90. That's 90 degrees at the knee and 90 degrees at the hip. While maintaining your balance, you will then squat as low as you can, trying to reach a 90 degree bend at the hip. Don't worry if you can't get all the way down. Just go as far as you can and work up to it. The key to this exercise is maintaining your balance without holding on to anything or putting the other leg down. This balance causes all of the smaller muscles to have to assist in the exercise, therefore getting a total workout of the leg. I myself use these balance exercises to rehab my knee after I was diagnosed with a torn meniscus. For some, this exercise will be really hard. For others, it may be too easy. I recommend doing sets of 10. If you are able to get down to 90 degrees and do a set of 10 easily, just grab a couple of dumbbells and find the right weight that makes 10 good and challenging. In most cases, you won't need any extra weight. Just your body weight on one leg should do the trick. And make sure you do it while trying to balance. If you're holding on to something, you're taking away a lot of the muscles that we need to use in this exercise, and you're making the exercise easier than it should be. So once you've done 10 on one leg, switch legs and do 10 on the other. The second exercise is similar, but instead of having your unused leg at 90 and 90, you're gonna put that leg behind you. Then you will squat and while squatting, again, not holding on to anything, you will reach down and try to touch your toes with both hands. The key to this is to bend the hip and the knee about the same. Don't just bend at the waist. If you can't make it all the way down to your toes, just reach as low as you can and try to get lower as you get better. Just as before, do a set of 10 without holding on to anything or putting your other foot down on the ground. Remember, forcing yourself to balance is what works all the little supportive muscles around the bigger muscles. If it's too easy, grab some dumbbells and see how much weight it takes to make it a good challenging set of 10. Do one leg and then do the other. The first exercise we did works more of the anterior front side of the thigh. The second set you should feel more in the glutes and hamstrings. Remember to keep your back straight while you're bending forward on this so that you don't hurt your back. When you get really good at this, you can grab a BOSU ball, which is those half balls, and stand on the ball side of that while doing this exercise. It makes it really challenging to balance that way. If you do these correctly, then you should feel like you had a really good leg and glute workout. Now let's talk about the exercises that people do that they think are helping their low back, when in fact is causing their low back pain. Because the pain doesn't happen right away, people don't realize that these are the exercises that are doing that are causing the back pain. 
Unlike squats and deadlifts, these exercises can be helpful for the core if you are doing them correct and your core is already strong enough to handle them. These exercises do involve muscles of the core, but they rely too much on the psoas muscle or hip flexor and not enough on the abdominal muscles. The exercise I'm talking about are leg lifts and planks. Again, these can be great exercises. Many of my patients start doing these exercises after being sedentary for a long time. And as we discussed in a previous video, when we don't work out or stretch the psoas muscle and we sit a lot, it becomes short and tight and the abdominal muscles become weak from lack of use. So here's what happens when you do these two exercises and you're just not ready. What happens when you initiate a leg lift? The psoas muscle, which anchors on the back, tries to lift the legs upwards with the abdominal muscles trying to keep the back from arching too much. This makes the primary muscle in this exercise the psoas and not the abdominal muscles. What's worse, I see people doing this with their hands under their butts, essentially taking the abdominal muscles completely out of the exercise. So if we do these and if the abdominal muscles are not strong enough to support the flexing of the psoas muscle, it tends to cause the back to arch more, causing compression to the posterior side of the lumbar spine. This in turn can lead to pain deep in the low back. In the same way, planks use the psoas muscles to keep the body in line. But as with leg lifts, if the abdominal muscles are not strong enough, the back begins to arch and we start compressing the posterior side of the lumbar spine again. This again can cause pain deep in the low back. So how do we work the lower abdominal muscles without overworking the psoas muscles and causing our back to arch? Well, we turn the abdominal muscles into the primary mover and take the psoas muscle out of the exercise. I call this exercise butt ups or lower ab crunches. Start out by lying on your back with your hands up by your head. You can put them behind your neck, but do not pull on the head or neck. And then bend your hips to 90 degrees. If you are flexible enough to point your toes to the sky, do that. If you are less flexible, like myself, you can keep the knees bent. This position is the start of the exercise. Now, all you do is tighten your lower ab muscles and try to lift your butt off the ground. Don't be discouraged. This is harder than it looks. When you first start this, you can bring your knees towards your head. As you get stronger, try to lift them straight up to the sky or ceiling. I try to do two sets to failure, or as many as I can. I follow this with regular crunches, and then I'll do a set of crunches with a little bit of a 45 degree twist on my upper body. This will work the oblique muscles. When your abdominal muscles are strong enough to allow you to lower your legs slowly to the ground without your back arching, then and only then are you ready to do leg lifts or planks. But even if they are strong enough and you feel pain doing either of these exercises, stop. Don't do them. Just concentrate on the lower ab crunch or the butt up, along with your regular crunches. Remember, to find out how to stretch the psoas, just check out this video I did a couple weeks ago. Well, I hope you found this video informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below, and I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. And if you want to see more videos, Please subscribe to this channel and don't forget to ring the bell so you know when I download a new video. And remember, if you are experiencing low back pain, please come and get it checked out so it doesn't turn into something more serious. Until next time, have a great day.